The Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, formerly the Crown of the Kingdom of Poland and the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, after 1791 the Commonwealth of Poland, was a dualistic state, a bi-confederation of Poland and Lithuania ruled by a common monarch, who was both the King of Poland and the Grand Duke of Lithuania. It was one of the largest and most populous countries of the 16th-17th century Europe. At its largest territorial extent, in the early 17th century, the Commonwealth spanned almost 400,000 square miles 1 million square kilometers and sustained a multi ethnic population of 11 million. The Commonwealth was established by the Union of Lublin in July 1569, but the Crown of the Kingdom of Poland and the Grand Duchy of Lithuania had been in a de facto personal union since 1386 with the marriage of the Polish Queen Hedwig and Lithuania. S. Grand Duke Jogela, who was crowned King Jury Uxorus Wladyslaw II Jagiello of Poland. The First Partition of Poland in 1772 and the Second Partition of Poland in 1793 greatly reduced the state's size and the Commonwealth collapsed as an independent state following the Third Partition of Poland in 1795. The Union possessed many features unique among contemporary states. Its political system was characterized by strict checks upon monarchical power. These checks were enacted by a legislature same controlled by the nobility This idiosyncratic system was a precursor to modern concepts of democracy, constitutional monarchy, and federation. Although the two component states of the Commonwealth were formally equal, Poland was the dominant partner in the Union. The Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth was marked by high levels of ethnic diversity and by relative religious tolerance, guaranteed by the Warsaw Confederation Act 1573. However, the degree of religious freedom varied over time. The Constitution of 1791 acknowledged Catholicism as the dominant religion. Unlike the Warsaw Confederation, but freedom of religion was still granted with it. After several decades of prosperity, it entered a period of protracted political, military, and economic decline. Its growing weakness led to its partitioning among its neighbors, Austria, Prussia, and the Russian Empire during the late 18th century. Shortly before its demise, the Commonwealth adopted a massive reform effort and enacted the May Third Constitution. The first codified constitution in modern European history and the second in modern world history after the United States Constitution. Topic Name. Topic. The official name of the state was the Kingdom of Poland and the Grand Duchy of Lithuania Polish, Królestwo Polski i Velki Kosiestwo Litewski, Lithuanian, Lenkihos Koralist i R. Lituvos Digiogi Kunigakstist, Latin, Regnum Poloniae Magnus Dicatus Lithuania and the Latin term was usually used in international treaties and diplomacy. In the 17th century and later it was also known as the Most Serene Commonwealth of Poland Polish, Nazizneszia Rzeczypospolita Polska, Latin, Serenissima Res Publica Poloniae, the Commonwealth of the Polish Kingdom, or the Commonwealth of Poland. Its inhabitants referred to it in everyday speech as the Rzeczypospolita, Ruthenian, Ark Pospolita Rek Pospolita, Lithuanian, Zekpospolita. Western Europeans often simply called it Poland and in most past and modern sources it is referred to as the Kingdom of Poland, or just Poland. The terms, the Commonwealth of Poland and the Commonwealth of Two Nations Polish, Rzeczypospolita Obojga Narodow, Latin, Race Publica Utrisk Nationis were used in the reciprocal guarantee of two nations. The English term, Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, and German, Poland-Litauen are seen as renderings of the Commonwealth of Two Nations variant. Other names include the Republic of Nobles Polish, Rzeczypospolita and the First Commonwealth Polish, the latter relatively common in Polish historiography. History Poland and Lithuania underwent an alternating series of wars and alliances during the 14th century and early 15th century. Several agreements between the two the Union of Krakow and Vilna, the Union of Kruo, the Union of Wilno and Radom, the Union of Grodno, and the Union of Horodlo were struck before the permanent 1569 Union of Lublin. This agreement was one of the signal achievements of Sigismund II Augustus, last monarch of the Jogelin dynasty. Sigismund believed he could preserve his dynasty by adopting elective monarchy. 
His death in 1572 was followed by a three year interregnum during which adjustments were made to the constitutional system. These adjustments significantly increased the power of the Polish nobility and established a truly elective monarchy. The Commonwealth reached its golden age in the early 17th century. Its powerful parliament was dominated by nobles pick two who were reluctant to get involved in the Thirty Years' War. This neutrality spared the country from the ravages of a political-religious conflict that devastated most of contemporary Europe. The Commonwealth was able to hold its own against Sweden, the Serdom of Russia, and vassals of the Ottoman Empire, and even launched successful expansionist offensives against its neighbours. In several invasions during the Time of Troubles, Commonwealth troops entered Russia and managed to take Moscow and hold it from 27 September 1610 to 4 November 1612, when they were driven out after a siege. Commonwealth power began waning after a series of blows during the following decades. A major rebellion of Ukrainian Cossacks in the southeastern portion of the Commonwealth the Komelnitsky Uprising in modern-day Ukraine began in 1648. It resulted in a Ukrainian request, under the terms of the Treaty of Pereyaslav, for protection by the Russian Tsar. Russian annexation of part of Ukraine gradually supplanted Polish influence. The other blow to the Commonwealth was a Swedish invasion in 1655, known as the Deluge, which was supported by troops of Transylvanian Duke George II Rakochi and Frederick William, Elector of Brandenburg. In the late 17th century, the king of the weakened Commonwealth, John III Sobieski, allied with Holy Roman Emperor Leopold I to deal crushing defeats to the Ottoman Empire. In 1683, the Battle of Vienna marked the final turning point in the 250-year struggle between the forces of Christian Europe and the Islamic Ottomans. For its centuries-long opposition to Muslim advances, the Commonwealth would gain the name of Antimorale Christianitatis bulwark of Christianity. During the next 16 years, the Great Turkish War would drive the Turks permanently south of the Danube River, never again to threaten Central Europe. By the 18th century, destabilization of its political system brought Poland to the brink of civil war. The Commonwealth was facing many internal problems and was vulnerable to foreign influences. An outright war between the king and the nobility broke out in 1715, and Tsar Peter the Great's mediation put him in a position to further weaken the state. The Russian army was present at the Silent Same of 1717, which limited the size of the armed forces to 24,000 and specified its funding, reaffirmed the destabilizing practice of liberum veto, and banished the king's Saxon army. The Tsar was to serve as guarantor of the agreement. Western Europe's increasing exploitation of resources in the Americas rendered the Commonwealth's supplies less crucial. In 1768, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth became a protectorate of the Russian Empire. Control of Poland was central to Catherine the Great's diplomatic and military strategies. Attempts at reform, such as the four-year Sejm's May Constitution, came too late. The country was partitioned in three stages by the neighboring Russian Empire, the Kingdom of Prussia, and the Habsburg Monarchy. By 1795, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth had been completely erased from the map of Europe. Poland and Lithuania were not re-established as independent countries until 1918. <laughs> State organization and politics Topic. Topic. Golden Liberty Topic. The political doctrine of the Commonwealth was our state as a republic under the presidency of the king. Chancellor Jan Zamoyski summed up this doctrine when he said that rex regnat et non gubernat, the king reigns but lit, and does not govern. The Commonwealth had a parliament, the same, as well as a senat and an elected king pick, one. The king was obliged to respect citizens' rights specified in King Henry. S. Articles as well as in Pacta Conventa, negotiated at the time of his election. The monarch's power was limited in favor of a sizable noble class. Each new king had to pledge to uphold the Henrician Articles, which were the basis of Poland's political system and included near unprecedented guarantees of religious tolerance. Over time, the Henrician Articles were merged with the Pacta Conventa, specific pledges agreed to by the king elect. From that point onwards, the king was effectively a partner with the noble class and was constantly supervised by a group of senators. 
The same could veto the king on important matters, including legislation the adoption of new laws, foreign affairs, declaration of war, and taxation changes of existing taxes or the levying of new ones. The foundation of the Commonwealth's political system, the Golden Liberty, Polish, Zolota Wolnosk, a term used from 1573 on, included election of the king by all nobles wishing to participate, known as Wolna Elektia free election. Same, the Commonwealth Parliament which the king was required to hold every two years. Pacta Conventa Latin, agreed to agreements, negotiated with the king-elect, including a Bill of Rights, binding on the king, derived from the earlier Henrician Articles. Religious freedom guaranteed by Warsaw Confederation Act 1573. Rokos insurrection, the right of Zalakta to form a legal rebellion against a king who violated their guaranteed freedoms. Liberum veto Latin, the right of an individual same deputy to oppose a decision by the majority in a same session, the voicing of such a free veto nullified all the legislation that had been passed at that session. During the crisis of the second half of the 17th century, Polish nobles could also use the liberum veto in provincial sejmiks. Confederatia from the Latin confederatio, the right to form an organization to force through a common political aim. The three regions see below of the Commonwealth enjoyed a degree of autonomy. Each voivodeship had its own parliament Sejmik, which exercised serious political power, including choice of posel deputy to the national same and charging of the deputy with specific voting instructions. The Grand Duchy of Lithuania had its own separate army, treasury and most other official institutions. Golden Liberty created a state that was unusual for its time, although somewhat similar political systems existed in the contemporary city-states like the Republic of Venice. Both states were styled Serenissima Respublica, or the Most Serene Republic. At a time when most European countries were headed toward centralization, absolute monarchy, and religious and dynastic warfare, the Commonwealth experimented with decentralization, confederation and federation, democracy, and religious tolerance. This political system, unusual for its time, stemmed from the ascendance of the Zalakta noble class over other social classes and over the political system of monarchy. In time, the Zalakta accumulated enough privileges such as those established by the Nile Novi Act of 1505 that no monarch could hope to break the Zalakta's grip on power. The Commonwealth's political system is difficult to fit into a simple category, but it can be tentatively described as a mixture of confederation and federation, with regard to the broad autonomy of its regions. It is, however, difficult to decisively call the Commonwealth either confederation or federation, as it had some qualities of both. Oligarchy, as only the Zalakta nobility, around 15% of the population, had political rights. Democracy, since all the Zalakta were equal in rights and privileges, and the same could veto the king on important matters, including legislation the adoption of new laws, foreign affairs, declaration of war, and taxation changes of existing taxes or the levying of new ones. Also, the 15% of Commonwealth population who enjoyed those political rights the Zalakta was a substantially larger percentage than in majority European countries even in the 19th century. Note that in 1820 in France only about 1.5% of the male adult population had the right to vote, and in 1840 in Belgium, only about 5%. Elective monarchy, since the monarch, elected by the Zalakta, was head of state, Constitutional monarchy, since the monarch was bound by Pacta Conventa and other laws, and the Zalakta could disobey any king's decrees they deemed illegal. Shortcomings The end of the Jogelin dynasty in 1572, after nearly two centuries, disrupted the fragile equilibrium of the Commonwealth's government. Power increasingly slipped away from the central government to the nobility. When presented with periodic opportunities to fill the throne, the Zalakta exhibited a preference for foreign candidates who would not found another strong dynasty. This policy often produced monarchs who were either totally ineffective or in constant debilitating conflict with the nobility. Furthermore, aside from notable exceptions such as the able Transylvanian Stefan Batory (1576–86), the kings of foreign origin were inclined to subordinate the interests of the Commonwealth to those of their own country and ruling house. 
This was especially visible in the policies and actions of the first two elected kings from the Swedish House of Vesa, whose politics brought the Commonwealth into conflict with Sweden, culminating in the war known as the Deluge 1655, one of the events that marked the end of the Commonwealth's Golden Age and the beginning of the Commonwealth's decline. The Zbrodowski Rebellion (1606–1607) marked a substantial increase in the power of the Polish magnates and the transformation of Zalakta democracy into magnate oligarchy. The Commonwealth's political system was vulnerable to outside interference, as same deputies bribed by foreign powers might use their liberum veto to block attempted reforms. This sapped the Commonwealth and plunged it into political paralysis and anarchy for over a century, from the mid-17th century to the end of the 18th, while its neighbors stabilized their internal affairs and increased their military might. <laughs> Late reforms the Commonwealth did eventually make a serious effort to reform its political system, adopting in 1791 the Constitution of 3 May 1791, which historian Norman Davies calls the first of its kind in Europe. The revolutionary constitution recast the erstwhile Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth as a Polish-Lithuanian federal state with a hereditary monarchy and abolished many of the deleterious features of the old system. The new constitution abolished the liberum veto and banned the Zalaktas confederations, provided for a separation of powers among legislative, executive and judicial branches of government, established popular sovereignty, and extended political rights to include not only the nobility but the bourgeoisie, increased the rights of the peasantry, preserved religious tolerance but with a condemnation of apostasy from the Catholic faith. These reforms came too late, however, as the Commonwealth was immediately invaded from all sides by its neighbors, which had been content to leave the Commonwealth alone as a weak buffer state, but reacted strongly to attempts by King Stanislaw August Poniatowski and other reformers to strengthen the country. Russia feared the revolutionary implications of the May 3 Constitution's political reforms and the prospect of the Commonwealth regaining its position as a European power. Catherine the Great regarded the May Constitution as fatal to her influence and declared the Polish Constitution Jacobinical. Grigory Aleksandrovich Potemkin drafted the Act for the Targovitsa Confederation, referring to the Constitution as the "...contagion of democratic ideas". Meanwhile, Prussia and Austria used it as a pretext for further territorial expansion. Prussian minister Ewald Friedrich von Hertzberg called the Constitution "...a blow to the Prussian monarchy." fearing that a strengthened Poland would once again dominate Prussia. In the end, the May 3 constitution was never fully implemented, and the Commonwealth entirely ceased to exist only four years after the its adoption. Economy <inaudible> 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 The economy of the Commonwealth was dominated by feudal agriculture based on the plantation system serfs. Slavery was forbidden in Poland in the 15th century, and formally abolished in Lithuania in 1588, replaced by the second ensurfment. Typically a nobleman's landholding comprised a folwork, a large farm worked by serfs to produce surpluses for internal and external trade. This economic arrangement worked well for the ruling classes in the early era of the Commonwealth, which was one of the most prosperous eras of the grain trade. The economic strength of Commonwealth grain trade waned from the late 17th century on. Trade relationships were disrupted by the wars, and the Commonwealth proved unable to improve its transport infrastructure or its agricultural practices. Serfs in the region were increasingly tempted to flee. The Commonwealth S major attempts at countering this problem and improving productivity consisted of increasing serfs workload and further restricting their freedoms in a process known as export-led serfdom. Urban population of the Commonwealth was low compared to Western Europe. Exact numbers depend on calculation methods. According to one source, the urban population of the Commonwealth was about 20% of the total in the 17th century, compared to approximately 50% in the Netherlands and Italy. Pick 7. Another source suggests much lower figures, 4-8% urban population in Poland, 34-39% in the Netherlands and 22-23% in Italy. The Commonwealth's preoccupation with agriculture, coupled with the Zalakta 
S privileged position when compared to the bourgeoisie resulted in a fairly slow process of urbanization and thus a rather slow development of industries while similar conflicts among social classes may be found all over Europe nowhere were the nobility as dominant at the time as in the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth there is however much debate among historians as to which processes most affected those developments since until the wars and crises of the mid 17th century the cities of the commonwealth had not markedly lagged in size and wealth behind their western counterparts the commonwealth did have numerous towns and cities commonly founded on magdeburg rights some of the largest trade fairs in the commonwealth were held at lublin see the geography section below for a list of major cities in the commonwealth commonly capitals of voivodeships Poland Lithuania played a significant role in the supply of 16th century Western Europe by the export of three sorts of goods, notably grain, rye, cattle, oxen, and fur. These three articles amounted to nearly 90% of the country's exports to Western markets by overland and maritime trade. Although the Commonwealth was Europe's largest grain producer, the bulk of her grain was consumed domestically. Estimated grain consumption in the Polish crown Poland proper and Prussia in 1560–70 was some 113,000 tonnes of wheat or 226,000 last, a last, or last, being a large bulk measure, in the case of grain, about half a tonne. Average yearly production of grain in the Commonwealth in the 16th century was 120,000 tons, 6% of which was exported, while cities consumed some 19% and the remainder was consumed by the villages. Commonwealth grain achieved far more importance in poor crop years, as in the early 1590s and the 1620s, when governments throughout southern Europe arranged for large grain imports to cover shortfalls in their jurisdictions. Still, grain was by far the largest export commodity of the Commonwealth. The owner of a foalwork usually signed a contract with merchants of Gdansk, who controlled 80% of this inland trade, to ship the grain north to that seaport on the Baltic Sea. Many rivers in the Commonwealth were used for shipping purposes, the Vistula, Palika, Bug, San, Nida, Wieps, Neman. The rivers had relatively developed infrastructure, with river ports and granaries. Most of the river shipping moved north, southward transport being less profitable, and barges and rafts were often sold off in Gdansk for lumber. Rodna became an important site after formation of a customs post at Augusto in 1569, which became a checkpoint for merchants traveling to the Crown lands from the Grand Duchy. From Gdansk, ships, mostly from the Netherlands and Flanders, carried the grain to ports such as Antwerp and Amsterdam. Besides grain, other seaborne exports included carminic acid from Polish cochineal, lumber and wood-related products such as ash, and tar. The land routes, mostly to the German lands of the Holy Roman Empire such as the cities of Leipzig and Nuremberg, were used for export of live cattle herds of around 50,000 head hides, furs, salt, tobacco, hemp, cotton mostly from Greater Poland and linen. The Commonwealth imported wine, fruit, spices, luxury goods e.g. tapestries, pick, five, clothing, fish, beer and industrial products like steel and tools. A few riverboats carried south imports from Gdansk like wine, fruit, spices and herring. Somewhere between the 16th and 17th centuries, the Commonwealth's trade balance shifted from positive to negative. With the advent of the Age of Discovery, many old trading routes such as the Amber Road pick, four, lost importance as new ones were created. Poland's importance as a caravan route between Asia and Europe diminished, while new local trading routes were created between the Commonwealth and Russia. Many goods and cultural artifacts continued to pass from one region to another via the Commonwealth. For example, Isfahan rugs imported from Persia to the Commonwealth were actually known in the West as Polish rugs. French, Polonaise, Commonwealth currency included the Zloty and the Grosz. The city of Gdansk had the privilege of minting its own coinage. <laughs> <laughs> Military The military of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth evolved from the merger of the armies of the Kingdom of Poland and the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. The army was commanded by the hetman. The most unusual formation of the army was the heavy cavalry in the form of the Polish winged hussars. The Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth Navy never played a major role in the military structure, and ceased to exist in the mid-17th century. 
Commonwealth forces were engaged in numerous conflicts in the south against the Ottoman Empire, the east against the Serdom of Muscovy, later known as the Russian Empire, and the north the Kingdom of Sweden, as well as internal conflicts, most notably numerous Cossack uprisings. For the first century or so, the Commonwealth military was usually successful, but became less so from around the mid-17th century. Plagued by insufficient funds, it found itself increasingly hard-pressed to defend the country, and inferior in numbers to the growing armies of the Commonwealth's neighbours. The Commonwealth was formed at the Union of Lublin of 1569 from the Kingdom of Poland and the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. The armies of those states differed from the organization common in the west of Europe, as according to Bardak, the mercenary formations Polish, Wasko Nahimna, common there, never gained popularity in Poland. Brzezinski, however, notes that foreign mercenaries did form a significant portion of the more elite infantry units, at least till the early 17th century. In the 15th century Poland, several other formations formed the core of the military. There was a small standing army, Obrona Potoczna. Continuous defense, about 1,500 to 3,000 strong, paid for by the king, and primarily stationed at the troubled south and eastern borders. It was supplemented by two formations mobilized in case of war: the Pospolite Rusheni (Polish Lwy on Mass, feudal levy of mostly noble knights landholders), and the Wasko Zaczesny, recruited by the Polish commanders for the conflict. It differed from Western mercenary formations in that it was commanded by Polish officers and dissolved after the conflict has ended. Several years before the Union of Lublin, the Polish Obrona Potoczna was reformed as the same National Parliament of Poland legislated in 1562 to 1563 the creation of Wasco Korciane named after court attacks levied on the royal lands for the purpose of maintaining this formation. This formation was also paid for by the king, and in the peace time, numbered about 3,500 to 4,000 men according to Bardak. Brzezinski gives the range of 3,000 to 5,000. It was composed mostly of the light cavalry units manned by nobility and commanded by hetmans. Often, in wartime, the same would legislate a temporary increase in the size of the Wasco Korciane. Following the end of the Commonwealth, Polish military tradition would be continued by the Napoleonic Polish legions and the army of the Duchy of Warsaw. Culture Science and literature The Commonwealth was an important European centre for the development of modern social and political ideas. It was famous for its rare quasi-democratic political system, praised by philosophers, and during the Counter-Reformation was known for near unparalleled religious tolerance, with peacefully coexisting Roman Catholic, Jewish, Orthodox Christian, Protestant and Muslim Sufi communities. In the 18th century, the French Catholic Rolhier wrote of 16th century Poland, This country, which in our day we have seen divided on the pretext of religion, is the first state in Europe that exemplified tolerance. In this state, mosques arose between churches and synagogues. The Commonwealth gave rise to the famous Christian sect of the Polish Brethren, antecedents of British and American Unitarianism. With its political system, the Commonwealth gave birth to political philosophers such as Andrzej Frycz Modrzewski (1503–1572), Pick Nine, Warzyniak Gerzmala Goslitski (1530–1607), and Peter Skarga (1536–1612). Later, works by Stanislaw Stasiuk (1755–1826) and Hugo Kolotaj (1750–1812) helped pave the way for the Constitution of the 3rd of May 1791, which Norman Davies calls the first of its kind in Europe. Krakow. S. Jagiellonian University is one of the oldest universities in the world established in 1364, together with the Jesuit Academy of Wilno established in 1579 they were the major scholarly and scientific centers in the Commonwealth. The Komisja Edukak G. Narodowe, Polish for Commission for National Education, formed in 1773, was the world's first national ministry of education. Commonwealth scientists included Martin Cromer (1512–1589), historian and cartographer; Michal Sedzawa (1566–1636), alchemist and chemist; Jan Brozek, Johannes Brachus in Latin (1585–1652), polymath, a mathematician, physician, and astronomer; Krzysztof Arkaszewski, Krzysztof D. 
Ardichão Arkashuski in Portuguese 1592 to 1656 engineer ethnographer general and admiral of the Dutch West Indies Company army in the war with the Spanish Empire for control of Brazil Casimir Simeonovich 1600 to 1651 military engineer artillery specialist and a founder of rocketry Johannes Hevelius 1611 to 1687 astronomer founder of lunar topography Mihal Boim 1612 to 1659 orientalist cartographer naturalist and diplomat in Ming dynasty S service pick 11 Adam Adamandy Kochansky 1631 to 1700 mathematician and engineer Baal Shem Tov H Baal Shem Tov in Hebrew 1698 to 1760 considered to be the founder of Hasidic Judaism Marcin Odlanitsky Pochabit 1728 to 1810 astronomer and mathematician pick 12 Jan Krzysztof Kluk 1739 to 1796 naturalist agronomist and entomologist John Johnston 1603 to 1675 scholar and physician descended from scottish nobility in 1628 the czech teacher scientist educator and writer john amos comenius took refuge in the commonwealth when the protestants were persecuted under the counter reformation the works of many commonwealth authors are considered classics including those of jan kahanovsky pick 10 waklaw pototsky ignacy krasitsky and julian urson nemsowitz Many Zalakta members wrote memoirs and diaries. Perhaps the most famous are the memoirs of Polish history by Albrecht Stanislaw Radziwiłł (1595–1656) and the memoirs of Jan Chrysostom Pasek (ca. 1636–ca. 1701). Jakub Sobieski (1590–1646), father of John III Sobieski, wrote notable diaries. During the Khotan expedition in 1621 he wrote a diary called Commentariorum Chotanensis Belli Libri Trace Diary of the Chasm War, which was published in 1646 in Gdansk. It was used by Wakla Potocki as a basis for his epic poem, Transaksha Wojny Chosiskij The Progress of the War of Chasm. He also authored instructions for the journey of his sons to Krakow 1640 and France 1645, a good example of liberal education of the era. Art and music The two great religious cultures of the Commonwealth, Latin and Eastern Orthodox, coexisted and penetrated each other, which is reflected in the great popularity of icons and the icons resembling effigies of Mary, as well as the metal dresses typical of the Orthodox Church in the predominantly Latin territories of today's Poland Black Madonna and Lithuania Our Lady of the Gate of Dawn. The implementation of post-Renaissance naturalism and the sentimentality of the Polish Baroque in Orthodox painting as well as the creation of the Cossack Baroque style in architecture, also inspired by Polish patterns, were the major factors of Latin infiltration into Eastern Orthodox art Pick. Three. A common art form of the Sarmatian period were coffin portraits, particular to the culture of the Commonwealth, used in funerals and other important ceremonies. As a rule, such portraits were nailed to sheet metal, six, or eight, sided in shape, fixed to the front of a coffin placed on a high, ornate catafalque. Another characteristic is common usage of black marble. Altars, fonts, portals, balustrades, columns, monuments, tombstones, headstones and whole rooms e.g. marble room at the Royal Castle in Warsaw, St. Casimir Chapel of the Wilno Cathedral and Vesa Chapel of the Wawel Cathedral were decorated with black marble. Music was a common feature of religious and secular events. To that end many noblemen founded church and school choirs, and employed their own ensembles of musicians. Some, like Stanislaw Lubomirsky built their own opera houses in Nawi Visnich. Yet others, like Janusz Skumen Tishkovic and Krzysztof Rodziewiel were known for their sponsorship of arts which manifested itself in their permanently retained orchestras, at their courts in Wilno. Musical life further flourished during the reign of the Vases. Both foreign and domestic composers were active in the Commonwealth. King Sigismund III brought in Italian composers and conductors, such as Luca Morenzio, Annabelle Stable, Asprilio Pacelli, Marco Scacci and Diomedes Cato for the Royal Orchestra. Notable home-grown musicians, who also composed and played for the king's court, included Bartłomiej Pikiel, Jacek Rzycki, Adam Jerzebski, Marcin Milczewski, Stanislaw Sylwester Szarzynski, Damian Stachowicz, Mikolaj Zielenski and Grzegorz Gerczyki. 
Magnates often undertook construction projects as monuments to themselves, churches, cathedrals, monasteries Pick, 14, and palaces like the present-day Presidential Palace in Warsaw and Pityertsi Castle built by Grand Hetman Stanislaw Konietzpolski Herbu Pobog. The largest projects involved entire towns, although in time many of them would lapse into obscurity or be totally abandoned. Usually they were named after the sponsoring magnate. Among the most famous is the town of Zamisk, founded by Jan Zamoyski and designed by the Italian architect Bernardo Morando. The magnates throughout Poland competed with the kings. The monumental castle Christopor, built in the style palazzo in Forteza between 1627 and 1644, had several courtyards surrounded by fortifications. Due to efforts of powerful Radziwiłł family, the town of Nezvis in today. S. Belarus came to exercise significant influence in many domains. The Nezvi's manufactures of firearm, carpets, kontush sashes, and tapestries, as well as school of painting, produced renowned and luxury items. Late Baroque fascination with the culture and art of the Central Nation is reflected in Queen Marie's Chinese palace in Zalakiv. 18th century magnate palaces represents the characteristic type of Baroque suburban residence built entre cower et jardin between the entrance court and the garden. Its architecture, a merger of European art with old Commonwealth building traditions are visible in Willenau Palace in Warsaw Pick, 15, Branicki Palace in Bialystok and in Warsaw, Potocki Palace in Rajin Podlaski and in Kristinopol, Rachinsky Palace in Rogolin and Sapieha Palace in Ruzani. Zalakta and Sarmatism The prevalent ideology of the Zalakta became Sarmatism, named after the Sarmatians, alleged ancestors of the Poles. This belief system was an important part of Zalakta culture, penetrating all aspects of its life. Sarmatism enshrined equality among Zalakta, horseback riding, tradition, provincial rural life, peace and pacifism, championed Oriental-inspired attire zupin, kontush, sukmana, pa kontuszawi, dilya, shabla, and served to integrate the multi-ethnic nobility by creating an almost nationalistic sense of unity and of pride in the golden freedoms. In its early, idealistic form, Sarmatism represented a positive cultural movement, it supported religious belief, honesty, national pride, courage, equality and freedom. In time, however, it became distorted. Late extreme Sarmatism turned belief into bigotry, honesty into political naivete, pride into arrogance, courage into stubbornness and freedom into anarchy. The faults of Sarmatism were blamed for the demise of the country from the late 18th century onwards. Criticism, often one-sided and exaggerated, was used by the Polish reformists to push for radical changes. This self-deprecation was accompanied by works of Prussian, Russian and Austrian historians, who tried to prove that it was Poland itself that was to blame for its fall. <laughs> Demographics and religion the Commonwealth comprised various identities, Poles, Lithuanians, Czechs, Hungarians, Slovaks, Ruthenians, Belarusians and Ukrainians, and Vlachs Romanians. Sometimes inhabitants of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania were called Litvins, a Slavic term for people from Lithuania, regardless of their ethnicity with the exception of Jews, who were called Litviks. Shortly after the Union of Lublin in 1569, the Commonwealth population was around 7 million, with roughly of 4.5 million Poles, 750,000 Lithuanians, 700,000 Jews and 2 million Ruthenians. In 1618, after the Truce of Dulino, the Commonwealth population increased together with its territory, reaching 12 million people, which was composed roughly of 4.5 million Poles, 3.5 million Ukrainians, 1.5 million Belarusians, 750,000 Lithuanians, 750,000 Old Prussians, 500,000 Jews, and 500,000 Livonians. At that time nobility was 10% of the population, and burghers were 15%. The average population density per square kilometre was, 24 in Mazovia, 23 in Lesser Poland, 19 in Great Poland, 12 in Lublin Palatinate, 10 in the Lvov area, 7 in Podolia and Volhynia, and 3 in the Ukraine. There was a tendency for the people from the more densely inhabited western territories to migrate eastwards. 
In the period from 1648 to 1657, population's losses are estimated at 4 meters. Coupled with further population and territorial losses, in 1717 the Commonwealth population had fallen to 9 meters, with roughly 4.5 meters, 50% Poles, 1.5 meters, 17% Ukrainians, 1.2 meters Belarusians, 0.8 meters Lithuanians, 0.5 meters Jews, and 0.5 meters others. Just before the first partition of Poland, the Commonwealth S population stood at some 14 million, including around 1 million nobles, 4.7 million uniates and 400,000 Orthodox Christians. In 1792, the population was around 11 million and included 750,000 nobles. <laughs> Warsaw Confederation and religious freedom Historian Norman Davies wrote, Certainly, the wording and substance of the Declaration of the Confederation of Warsaw of 28 January 1573 were extraordinary with regards to prevailing conditions elsewhere in Europe, and they governed the principles of religious life in the Republic for over 200 years. Poland has a long tradition of religious freedom. The right to worship freely was a basic right given to all inhabitants of the Commonwealth throughout the 15th and early 16th century. Complete freedom of religion was officially recognized in Poland in 1573 during the Warsaw Confederation. Poland kept religious freedom laws during an era when religious persecution was an everyday occurrence in the rest of Europe. The Commonwealth was a place where the most radical religious sects, trying to escape persecution in other countries of the Christian world, sought refuge. In 1561 Bonifacio de Oria, a religious exile living in Poland, wrote of his adopted country's virtues to a colleague back in Italy, you could live here in accordance with your ideas and preferences, in great, even the greatest freedoms, including writing and publishing. No one is a censor here. This country became a place of shelter for heretics Cardinal Hossius, papal legate to Poland. To be Polish, in remote and multi-ethnic parts of the Commonwealth, was then much less an index of ethnicity than of religion and rank, it was a designation largely reserved for the landed noble class which included Poles, but also many members of non-Polish origin who converted to Catholicism in increasing numbers with each following generation. For the non-Polish noble such conversion meant a final step of Polonization that followed the adoption of the Polish language and culture. Poland, as the culturally most advanced part of the Commonwealth, with the royal court, the capital, the largest cities, the second oldest university in Central Europe after Prague, and the more liberal and democratic social institutions had proven an irresistible magnet for the non-Polish nobility in the Commonwealth. Many referred to themselves as Hente Ruthenus, Nation Polonus, Ruthenian by blood, Polish by nationality, since the 16th century onwards. As a result, in the eastern territories a Polish or Polonized aristocracy dominated a peasantry whose great majority was neither Polish nor Catholic. Moreover, the decades of peace brought huge colonization efforts to nowadays Ukraine, heightening the tensions among nobles, Jews, Cossacks traditionally Orthodox, Polish and Ruthenian peasants. The latter, deprived of their native protectors among the Ruthenian nobility, turned for protection to Cossacks that facilitated violence that in the end broke the Commonwealth. The tensions were aggravated by conflicts between Eastern Orthodoxy and the Greek Catholic Church following the Union of Brest, overall discrimination of Orthodox religions by dominant Catholicism, and several Cossack uprisings. In the West and North, many cities had sizable German minorities, often belonging to Lutheran or Reformed churches. The Commonwealth had also one of the largest Jewish diasporas in the world. By the mid 16th century, 80% of the world's Jews lived in Poland. Pick 16 until the Reformation, the Zalakta were mostly Catholic or Eastern Orthodox. Pick 3, 13. However, many families quickly adopted the Reformed religion. After the Counter-Reformation, when the Catholic Church regained power in Poland, the Zalakta became almost exclusively Catholic, despite the fact that Catholicism was not a majority religion the Catholic and Orthodox churches counted approximately 40% of the population each, while the remaining 20% were Jews and members of various Protestant churches, the Crown had about double the population of Lithuania and five times the income of the latter's treasury. 
As with other countries, the borders, area and population of the Commonwealth varied over time. After the Peace of Jam Zapolsky 1582, the Commonwealth had approximately 815,000 square kilometers area and a population of 7.5 million. After the Truce of Dulino 1618, the Commonwealth had an area of some 990,000 square kilometers and a population of 11 to 12 million including some 4 million Poles and close to a million Lithuanians. Topic: <laughs> Languages. Topic. Polish, officially recognized, dominant language, used by most of the Commonwealth's nobility and by the peasantry in the Crown Province, official language in the Crown Chancellery and since 1697 in the Grand Duchy Chancellery. Dominant language in the towns. Latin, off. Recog, commonly used in foreign relations and popular as a second language among some of the nobility. French, not officially recognized, replaced Latin at the royal court in Warsaw in the beginning of the 18th century as a language used in foreign relations and as genuine spoken language. It was commonly used as a language of science and literature and as a second language among some of the nobility. Ruthenian, also known as Chancellery Slavonic, off. Recog, official language in the Grand Duchy Chancellery until 1697 when replaced by Polish, used in some foreign relations its dialects modern Belarusian and Ukrainian were widely used in the Grand Duchy and eastern parts of the Crown as spoken language. Lithuanian, not officially recognized, but used in some official documents in the Grand Duchy and, mostly, used as a spoken language in the northwest part of the Grand Duchy in Lithuania proper and the northern part of Ducal Prussia Polish fief. German, off. Recog, used in some foreign relations, in Ducal Prussia and by minorities in the cities especially in the Royal Prussia. Hebrew, off. Recog, and Aramaic used by Jews for religious, scholarly, and legal matters. Yiddish, not officially recognized, used by Jews in their daily life. Italian, not officially recognized, used in some foreign relations and by Italian minorities in cities. Armenian, off, recog, used by the Armenian minority. Arabic, not officially recognized, used in some foreign relations and by Tatars in their religious matters, they also wrote Ruthenian in the Arabic script. <laughs> Legacy The Duchy of Warsaw, established in 1807, traced its origins to the Commonwealth. Other revival movements appeared during the November Uprising 1830 the January Uprising 1863 and in the 1920s, with Józef Pilsudski's failed attempt to create a Polish-led Mijamors federation that would have included Lithuania and Ukraine. Today S. Republic of Poland considers itself a successor to the Commonwealth, whereas the Republic of Lithuania, re-established at the end of World War I, saw the participation of the Lithuanian state in the old Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth mostly in a negative light at the early stages of regaining its independence, although this attitude has been changing recently. <laughs> Administrative divisions while the term, Poland, was also commonly used to denote this whole polity, Poland was in fact only part of a greater whole, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, which comprised primarily two parts, the crown of the Polish kingdom, Poland proper, colloquially, the crown, the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, colloquially, Lithuania, the Commonwealth was further divided into smaller administrative units known as voivodeships, each voivodeship was governed by a voivode governor. Voivodeships were further divided into starostwa, each starostwo being governed by a starosta. Cities were governed by castellans. There were frequent exceptions to these rules, often involving the zemia subunit of administration. The lands that once belonged to the Commonwealth are now largely distributed among several Central and East European countries, Poland, Ukraine, Moldova, Transnistria, Belarus, Russia, Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. Also some small towns in Slovakia, then within the Kingdom of Hungary, became a part of Poland in the Treaty of Lubola. Other notable parts of the Commonwealth, without respect to region or voivodeship divisions, include 
Lesser Poland Polish, Malopolska, Southern Poland, with two largest cities, its capital at Krakow, Krakow and Lublin in the northeast Greater Poland Polish, Wielkopolska, West Central Poland around Poznan and the Warta River system Masovia Polish, Mazows, Central Poland, with its capital at Warsawa Warsaw. Lithuania proper Lithuanian, Lituva Sioraha Prasmi, Tikroji Lituva, the Catholic, or, perhaps, in some cases ethnically Lithuanian, part of Grand Duchy in the northwest of it Samogitia Polish, Zamuds, Lithuanian, Zamathia, an autonomous area of Grand Duchy of Lithuania in the westernmost part of it, the western part of Lithuania proper Royal Prussia Polish, Prusy Kraluski, at the southern shore of the Baltic Sea, was an autonomous area since the Second Peace of Thorn 1466, incorporated into the Crown in 1569 with the Commonwealth's formation Pomerelia Polish, Pomors Gdansk, Pomerania around Gdansk Danzig, western part of Royal Prussia Ruthenia Polish, Rus, the Eastern Commonwealth, adjoining Russia Duchy of Livonia in Flanty, a joint domain of the Crown and the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, parts lost to Sweden in the 1620s and in 1660. Duchy of Courland Polish, Kurlandia, a northern fief of the Commonwealth. It established a colony in Tobago in 1637 and on St. Andrew's Island at the Gambia River in 1651 see Koronian colonization. Silesia Polish, Slask, was not within the Commonwealth, but small parts belonged to various Commonwealth kings, in particular, the Vesa kings were Dukes of Opol and Rasibers from 1645 to 1666. Commonwealth borders shifted with wars and treaties, sometimes several times in a decade, especially in the eastern and southern parts. After the Peace of Jam Zapolski, the Commonwealth had approximately 815,000 square kilometres area and a population of 7.5 million. After the Truce of Dulino, the Commonwealth had an area of some 1 million square kilometre and a population of about 11 million. Geography <laughs> In the 16th century, the Polish bishop and cartographer Martin Kromer published a Latin atlas, entitled Poland, about its location, people, culture, offices and the Polish Commonwealth, which was regarded as the most comprehensive guide to the country. Kromer's works and other contemporary maps, such as those of Gerardus Mercator, show the Commonwealth as mostly plains. The Commonwealth's southeastern part, the Kresy, was famous for its steppes. The Carpathian Mountains formed part of the southern border, with the Tatra mountain chain the highest, and the Baltic Sea formed the Commonwealth's northern border. As with most European countries at the time, the Commonwealth had extensive forest cover, especially in the east. Today, what remains of the Bialowiza forest constitutes the last largely intact primeval forest in Europe. Topic. Image gallery Topic. Topic. See also. Topic. Historical powers. List of Polish coats of arms. List of Zalakta. Polish heraldry. Lithuanian nobility. History of the Germans in Poland. History of the Jews in Poland. History of Poland. History of Lithuania. Topic. Notes Topic. A. Carat name in native and official languages Latin, Regnum Poloniae Magnus Decatus Lithuania, Serenissima Race Publica Poloniae French, Royaume de Pologne et Grand Duché de Lituanie, Serenissime République de Pologne et Grand Duché de Lituanie Polish, Królestwo Polski i Velki Kasiestwo Litewski Lithuanian, Lenkihos Karalist i r Lituvos Digiogi Kunagakstist Belarusian, Karalaistva Polske i Valike Nastva Lituiske Karalaistva Polskahe i Vialikahe Niastva Li Tuskahe Ukrainian Korolivistvo Polski i Valike Nazivistvo Litovski German, Konigrik Poland und Grofersentum Litauenby
Carat some historians date the change of the Polish capital from Krakow to Warsaw between 1595 and 1611, although Warsaw was not officially designated capital until 1793. The Commonwealth Sejm began meeting in Warsaw soon after the Union of Lublin and its rulers generally maintained their courts there, although coronations continued to take place in Krakow. The modern concept of a single capital city was to some extent inapplicable in the feudal and decentralized Commonwealth. Warsaw is described by some historians as the capital of the entire Commonwealth. Wilno, the capital of the Grand Duchy, is sometimes called the second capital of the entity. References Sources Bardak, Julius, Lesnodorsky, Bogosław, Peterzak, Michal 1987. Historia Państwa i Prawa Polskiego. Warsaw, Perestwa Wydaniktwo Naukow. Brzezinski, Richard 1987. Polish Armies 1, 1569–1696 Men at Arms Series, 184. Osprey Publishing. ISBN 0-85045-736-X. Brzezinski, Richard 1988. Polish Armies 2, 1569–1696 Men at Arms Series, 188. Osprey Publishing. ISBN 0-85045-744-0. Suzidelis, Saulius A. Historical Dictionary of Lithuania 2 ed., Scarecrow Press. ISBN 978-0810875364. Henrik Litwin, Central European Superpower, BUM Magazine, October 2016. External links In Polish in English, Commonwealth of Diverse Cultures, Poland's Heritage In Polish Knowledge Passage in Polish, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth Maps, History of Cities in Poland, Ukraine, Belarus and Lithuania.